Welcome back to the video. <clears throat> a lot has happened here since I recorded last. Uh, you should have seen the last video. We took it down a whole bunch of trees. Uh, over here on the side, which I'll show you later. And uh, I've taken out a couple stumps, uh, built some more beds. Uh, just a whole lot going on here. I need to mill this log down. The reason I haven't milled it down yet is because my chainsaw has a 20 inch bar but when i put this chainsaw inside my alaskan mill which is actually over at the base of the camera right now i only have a 14 inch cut area because i have to clamp it on the front and the back and it cuts a few inches off the the front and the end of the uh of the bar so i only have a 14 inch cut area this log is wider than 14 inches. So I'm gonna have to do some freehand cuts. So let me show you what I did uh, to be able to make these freehand cuts and then we'll see how it turns out. So what you see here, I made a level line across here and did the same thing on the other side. I did a square, short square line off each side here so I put my chalk line on it, snap a nice straight line. Then I came down, so this is an inch and a half. I came down another inch and a half, so three inches total. Did the same thing again. So this will create my crown piece with the lot full live edge. And then that'll be my first usable board down there. Then what I'll do when I'm cutting with my chainsaw, I'll start my cut at the level line. Of course, I'll start at the other end of the log, which is a higher elevation. That way gravity will help draw my saw along. And uh, I will start my cut at the level line, but I'll try to follow the snapped line on either side of the log to try to keep my chainsaw level. It's not gonna be a perfect cut, but it should get me pretty close. Once I make these two cuts, I plan to rotate the log. And then uh, once the log's rotated, I'll snap the lines, do another level cut or two. And uh, Hopefully the log will be small enough at that point. Uh, I can get it in the, put the chainsaw back in the sawmill, put my board on, do my level cut, and just mill it down from there. So that's the plan. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's give it a try. Oh, one more thing. To be able to turn the logs, I bought some new tools called cant hooks. I will actually turn my camera this way and show you how these cant hooks work. So this is a cant hook, and a cant hook has this little adjustable claw, if you will. On the main pole, there's a spike right here. And what that allows me to do is to grip a log and then be able to roll it. It also has, in this particular case, not all cant hooks do, this one has a, a kickstand of sorts on the back end. So when I'm rolling logs, I can actually get them up off the ground and it makes it easier to cut on them without having to worry about running my chainsaw into the dirt. So let me show you how this works real quick. Move my chainsaw. And we're gonna adjust the camera again. I'll get it down here on this log so you can see it. So basically, I could roll roll it away from me. I found with this particular cant hook I have, give it a little kick here uh, so it can dig in. It doesn't catch as easily when there's no bark and this log's already been debarked. But you can see I can roll a log easily this way. If I want to prop it up off the ground, I can very easily pull this log up. Now I have it propped off the ground, I can cut on the end of it if I need to. So that's how my cant hook works. Let's go ahead and start the saw up and try to do some freehand uh, cuts on this, planing cuts on this uh, log over here.
Okay, uh, sorry about that. When the camera cut out, it's because my SD card in the camera got full. So, just ran out of memory space. And uh, so I just finished what I was doing yesterday, took the camera in last night, emptied all the videos off, came back out this morning, but it still read the SD card is full, even though it was not. And I didn't wanna, I fiddled around with it a little bit this morning. I didn't wanna spend a lot of time on it. So, I uh, apologize, I didn't get to record what I did today, but I'm gonna give you a quick tour so you can see everything I've done actually over the last couple of weeks. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, the large log, the last bit of that tree stump you see right there, has been milled down and removed. So thank goodness that is gone. The next big, excuse me, the next big task on my agenda is to actually dig that stump out that is going to be a chore I got to take that stump out and this little stump right here out in order to put my little cornfield in I'm gonna do a little cornfield here eventually this is gonna be part of my food forest and between where that stump is and this stump maybe a little bit further this way I'm gonna put a pond in but uh, for now I'm gonna put some corn in there I'm going to try one more time. I've attempted this a few times with very little success. But I'm going to try to do the Three Sisters, which is corn, beans, uh, and uh, squash. So corn are your corn stalks, and that's you know, they produce corn. And they grow tall, and then your beans actually grow up the stalks, so the corn are providing support for the beans. 
and uh, and the beans will provide nutrients into the ground that the corn needs. They will actually put nitrogen in the ground. Corn is a nitrogen hog. They love, they will use up all the nitrogen in the soil. So the beans actually keep the soil rich with nitrogen for the corn, so you end up with healthier corn. Plus you get beans and the corn supplies support for the beans. Then the squash will use some of the nitrogen that the beans put into the soil as well, but they'll also provide ground cover, which helps retain uh, moisture retention in the soil. And so everything will have plenty of water to thrive and uh, produce for you. So that's three sisters. I'm going to try that again. Then coming this way, I do have some more work to do, a little bit of cleanup to do. That, what you see right there, that little stump of a, <laughs> of a tree is my, again, failed attempt at doing a workbench. Uh, I've been using uh, maple for the legs. And I've been whittling them down so I can put them in those little holes you see there. And in fact, let's get a little bit closer here. Move the camera a little bit closer so you can see. There's a hole right there. There's the remains of a hole with part of the stick in it. And what's been happening is those legs have been breaking off. In fact, if you look right here, I still have one leg that didn't break and you can kind of see what I did here. Let's see if I can get the camera on this. So uh, I just whittle these things down a little bit, just using some hand tools and, uh, and then that's what I put in these holes right here like this. So let's move that camera a little bit. See, the lighting is horrible. So these legs actually just go in these holes. This is maple wood and these things uh, have been breaking. So I'm gonna have to try a different kind of wood, maybe even a bigger hole. I'm thinking of switching to hickory. I saw someone else make a bench like this using hickory and seemed to have more success with it. So every time I put these types of legs in there though, they have broke. This is my third pair of legs. Uh, as you can see the notches on there that's from another type of leg support I created once that did not work either evidently when you fell a tree and it lands on top of it <laughs> it will break so it's not uh, enough to support uh, a giant tree falling on it uh, that was actually kind of fun to watch because the legs just shattered from underneath it what's funny is it didn't crack or anything to the top piece uh, I was sure it would split it in half but no, the legs just shattered out from under it, so that's when I started doing something different. But anyways, it's been fun just playing around with that, building a workbench. That's not really what I'm trying to show you here, though, so let's take another look. All right, so here is my garden, and what you see in front of us here is the last bed that I needed to build in this section of the garden. Again, of course, I'm going to expand my garden out farther but there's some other work that has to happen before I can do that. So for now, to be able to garden this season, this is the garden I built using these materials I had available to me. Uh, before the last video, I had only built actually these two beds over here, you see, on the left side. Actually, I take that back. I can't remember how I did this. I built that far left bed and that far right bed and then I came back, and you didn't see this video, but because I didn't make one, but I built the inner left bed and the inner right bed. And just today, out of that last log that I milled up, I built this last bed right here. And that was not easy to dig out and make work in this space. But as you can see, I took some of my wood scraps throw them in the bottom, I'll bury all that under dirt, that'll rot down, provide nutrients back into the soil from the bottom, plus I do compost and mulch on the top. So uh, the dirt should be healthy and rich, uh, but all that wood around it, that is from 
that last log, that ginormous log that was sitting over there. Uh, I did just use my, I did, uh, as, as I was filming the video last time, I was freehand cutting some of those edges, and it was pretty rough. Uh, I'll admit, that's when the camera kind of messed up on me too, and the, the cuts were pretty rough. But they got that log down to the size I needed. After I rolled the log, I was able to put the chainsaw back on the mill and then mill the rest of that log down. So what I ended up with is a semi-straight edge that I just snapped a line and did a rip cut using my circular saw and that gave me a nice straight edge then and then uh, from there I could square up my edges, cut it to length, and then of course build this bed. So I have that going on for me. One last thing I want to show you is that the I planted some vegetables. Uh, it seemed a little early, I was nervous about it, but I went ahead and planted them anyways and they are starting to come up so in the back right there i've got my peas starting to come up uh just in front of that Let's see if we can catch this on video there we go there's my spinach and peas and spinach are coming up all along this bed right here i got my little signs i made spinach and peas and then get my shadow out of the way I've got some arugula right here coming in you can see my two rows of arugula right here we've got some mustard greens coming in this is uh, hickory wood I use to make these signs it's just a little wall paint nothing special not even an exterior paint so I don't know how long it'll last but these are radishes I've got right here uh, I've got some beets starting to come up these are harder to see they're a lot smaller try getting close here so you can see them but they're coming up all along this bed right here and then if I come back around to the other side back close to where we began there's my kale, and you can see it coming up real nice in here too. So garden's already working for me. There's where we started right there in that corner. My peas and spinach. All right, I think that's it for this video. Uh, again, I'm sorry I wasn't able to record myself doing some of the work. But uh, as you can see, I still have a lot of work going on. This bed I just built back here, uh, I'm gonna have to fill that with dirt, top it off with mulch. I'm gonna have some more planting to do. I've got root stumps to dig up. I've got a whole bunch of really heavy logs and figure out how to move halfway across my property. A uh, lot of work ahead of me. Then I'll have to mill all those up, build a mill for it. I mean, you can see there's plenty of stuff to do around here. So stay tuned and uh, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe and ring the little bell you see in the top corner and that will alert you when I post videos in the future. Thanks for watching.